Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, as per usual, we'd like to get started a couple minutes early just to uh, greet everybody and make sure that uh, you have a chance to get settled and and get ready for this webinar. We're going to be talking about this is this is all inclusive. It's going to cover different dealership departments and you know uh, just different ways that that you can uh, maximize the profit. Uh, that you're you're generating throughout any of the transactions. So give us about another minute, uh, I would say, and we will jump right in with the content. So uh, you're going to get about one minute, a little bit of awkward silence, and uh, we'll begin with five areas for driving dealership profits. Okay, well, thank you for joining us, everyone. And I know we'll get some people to hop on as we as we get going, but but right now we're going to start talking about of this as i mentioned just a few minutes ago for those of you who didn't hear there you know we we've uh when we get these deals today um you know with some of the profit margins that we're we're able to uh, generate um, we're looking for every opportunity to kind of uh increase enhance and improve the margin so um we're going to be talking about that today we've got binary solutions and david adcock here uh we're going to introduce him in a second but before we do uh two housekeeping items first of all on the right hand side of your screen you should have a go to webinar control panel it's got a bunch of gray bars and there's little triangles to the left. Uh, the one that we want to focus on is called questions. So if you want to hit that drop down, uh, just go ahead and type your questions as we go throughout the webinar. Uh, we kind of talked about this yesterday. David's got a ton of information to go through, so we're not going to try. We're going to try not to auctioneer this, but but there probably are going to be some precepts or or, or bits of information that you're going to want some more details on. So feel free to ask questions. We'll have some time to get those answered at the end. In addition, um, for those of you that you know are doing jobs uh, during the day, uh, we we obviously will record this webinar. It will be available inside of the community, so we can get some good discussions going. We'll also email a copy out to anybody who registered for the broadcast today. So, without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to David. David, take it away. Introduce yourself, and let's jump in. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for that introduction and thank you for the opportunity to come spend time with everybody today. Hello, once again, my name is David Adcock and uh, today we're going to spend some time talking about five key areas for driving dealer profits. You know, this has been a, been a very unique year and uh, there's a great opportunity for us to continue to grow this year and close really strong and be in a running start going into next year. Before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about us. Uh, Binary Automotive Solutions, we're located here in Dallas, Texas. Uh, it was founded by Jim Binkley, a very good friend of mine, about 15 years ago. And he founded the company based on a couple of very simple ideas. Integrity was one of the top ideas, which is always something that we, go, uh, we, we never go without. And designed it to be able to show dealers ways that we can differentiate them from their competition to help them to realize those, those profits that we're all trying to reach in today's marketplace. A little bit, uh, a little bit about myself. Um, I started in the car industry uh, over 20 years ago. I was fortunate enough uh, to start my career. I coached college football for several years at Troy State University, today's Troy University. And having the opportunity to do that taught me a lot of things that are useful in today's automotive industry, you know, the, the motivation and how to get a message across and, and how to work as a team to make sure we're achieving goals. And when I left there, I went to work for my family's insurance agency, which gave me a, a great opportunity to learn from, uh, from them about insurance concepts and contracts, which has been very helpful in my career. Deciding to uh, burn my own path instead of the family path, I had a chance to go to work for Aon Warranty Group, but was uh, the enemy. Uh, I was teaching credit unions on how to sell extended service contracts against dealerships. And uh, Pat Ryan, at that point, saw how well we were doing, got me off of the dark side, and brought me in, taught me the automotive industry, everything from sales to finance and I became a national trainer for Pat Ryan doing those wonderful classes in Chicago and everything that uh, lots of you have heard of and probably attended. After uh, living in Chicago for a couple of years, this Florida boy jumped in an opportunity when AutoNation wanted to move me to Dallas to help run the finance departments of 44 dealerships here in Texas and um, I took the information that I knew at that time, opened my own dealer services agency and did it for about 12 years, 
worked with dealerships all over the country on, on different products. And even you see there, we developed the Infinity Personal Assistant. That's uh, Infinity's version of OnStar that we had a chance to build while I was doing that. And Jim uh, kept working me over about the program that he had. And I had an opportunity to put it in a dealership and I saw how it absolutely exploded. And two years ago, I made the decision that I wanted to be a part of bringing that to dealerships all over the country. So today we're gonna to use a little of those, uh, that experience and some of those messages to talk to you about these five key areas. I wanna to talk to you about digital marketing and some of the things that we see as opportunities there. Front end sales. I keep hearing from everybody, we can't make money on the front end anymore. I'm here to tell you, I don't believe that. We're gonna talk about that as we go. Finance departments, that's the side of the business I came up in. Um, you know, there are, there are tremendous opportunities there. I know how important finance is to all of you and your dealerships. Retention, we talk about this word every day. This is the lifeblood of continuing to grow a dealership. We want to talk about some things that go there. And training, near and dear to my heart, about why that's going to help tie all of these concepts together. So what we're going to do today is we're going to lay out these five issues. We're going to talk about five things we have an opportunity to grow on. And then we're going to go back and we're going to revisit each one of those five and help you to solve those problems with, uh, with some of the tools that we do in dealerships across the country. So let's get started. Digital marketing. Wow. How much of this are we spending our time on today? I'm here to tell you it's probably not enough. We're talking about where are our customers looking to buy cars? How is that helping us to stand out? So let's start by looking at the path to purchase. These customers that are on the web today that are going out and that are looking for, for vehicles are spending up to 12 to 13 weeks looking at their purchase before they come in and buy this. And these aren't our numbers. The numbers you see today are gonna come from Cox Automotive. They're gonna come from JD Powers. They're coming from people who are paid to do this in the business. 12 to 13 weeks, we're talking about three months that a customer's spending looking at the vehicle they want to buy. How are we getting to that customer? How are we spending our time and money to get our message to that customer? You know, you can look and you can see the different generations and how it's taking longer and longer the amount of time they spend researching. Well, here's something else that's very interesting. Of those people that are out there looking, 53% of those people that are out looking at these pieces have already decided before they walk into your dealership the make and model of vehicle they want to purchase. You know, when I first got into this, we were doing four and a half dealership visits to buy a car. That's not the same anymore. We're talking about much less, somewhere closer to two. We'll talk about that as we go. But these people are making their decisions before they get in which means we have to start earlier getting our message across to them about why we're different and what it is that we're gonna to do to provide value to get that customer to come to our store. Let's talk about what the, the amount of time they're spending online. Very interesting thought. 61% of your customers right now, they're, they're, your customers spend 61% of their time looking at what's going on, on online, picking the vehicles that they wanna see they're not spending as much time in the dealerships. They're going in about 20% of the time. So what we have to do is we have to find a way to market to that 81% of the public who's out there looking at our cars. If we can market to them, if we can differentiate ourselves to them and build value, they're gonna to come to your dealership to buy cars. That's what we wanna talk about today. So where are they starting? You know where they're starting. They're starting on third party websites. They're going to Kelly Blue Book, Auto Trader, Car Genius, True Car. What are they seeing when they get there? They're seeing a picture of a car. They're seeing a price. Well, that's not helping to differentiate us. That's not helping to drive them to our site. What we need to do is we need to, we need to figure out how we get them to get from that third, third party site, jumping onto our site. You'll see here, that what you're talking about is 31% of people out there, they spend 31% of their time looking at that, at that third party site and 27% of the time going to our site. What are we going to do as an industry or as an individual dealership to drive a customer from that third party site onto our website? 
What message are we going to give them to get them there? And is it only price? Because if you look today, what you're seeing is, is you're seeing that price is that one thing that we keep talking to customers about. I'm telling you, we're gonna find a different, a different way and a better way. This is what we were talking about a moment ago. The visits to an individual dealership continue to go down. When I started, like I said, it was four and a half visits, 4.3 visits. 2017, it was 2.6, it's down to 2.5 on new cars, 2.2 on used cars. That's good and bad. The good news to that is, is that when a customer shows up at your dealership, they're ready to buy. They're not shopping as much as they used to. So we've gotta be able to build a message for that customer to get them in the door so that they're appreciating value when they show up. If they show up in my dealership and I haven't reached that point yet, it's too late. We're gonna to have to get to those people soon. So digital is an exceptional part of what it is that we wanna talk about in today's, in today's uh, webinar. What's the next step? Front end sales. So we've driven that customer from the web and driven them into our dealership. You know, we've got uh, over 300 clients around the country, dealership partners that we work with. And we go into those dealership partners at first and ask them, what's your unique selling proposition? What is it that sets you apart from, from your competition? And you can't look at me and tell me that it's because you've been in business for 81 years or your salespeople are better than somebody else. Because I promise you, your competition's not looking at you and telling you, well, we're terrible, go see them. You've got to have a unique selling proposition. What makes you different? Oddly enough, when we ask dealerships and ask salespeople, they generally come up with one of three answers. They're talking about price, product, or financing. That's what sets them apart. But does it really? Let's look at this. We talk about finance. The reality is we're all using the same banks to finance the vehicles that these customers are buying. There's no advantage to us there. We do not beat our competition when we're talking about financing. How about when we talk about the vehicles themselves, the product? Are you selling a good product? Absolutely you are, there's no question. The thing is that that customer or, or that your competition has the same product you do. We're not getting different Fords or Chevys or Nissans or Hondas than our competition is. We're getting the same cars. So product is not gonna differentiate us. Then there's price. This is the one that you hear too often. That picture remind anybody of what it looks like in your dealership on a Saturday morning? Everybody racing to the bottom, trying to get to the lowest price. What can I do to beat my competition? I've got to get down lower than they do as fast as possible. Really? Every time we do that, we're negotiating with our own paycheck. Why are we doing this? Basic economics tells us that a customer will make a purchase when value exceeds cost. Why do we spend all our time lowering costs to justify value instead of building value to justify cost? We are missing the boat. We're setting ourselves up for failure as far as profit goes on the front end of a vehicle. And I'm not the only one telling you this. We sit here and we look at some of the surveys that are out there and they will tell you that your customers are actually looking for quality over price, 53% of the customers out there rate quality as a more important factor when they're making their purchase than price or discounts. You know, if you if you look at the, the different ones, the, the different products that this particular survey did, you'll see smartphones and home electronics and everything. 74% of the people that were surveyed said that the reduction in price or discounts was not the determining factor in buying the vehicle. But we've all made the decision that price is what it's about. Is price ever going away? No, it's not. Let's be realistic. We're not talking about a magic bullet here. But I think we're missing the boat. When you look at men, men will tell you that 52% of them will say that the discounts or the price did not affect their buying decision. How about women? 97% were more interested in the quality and the value than they were the discounts. So why do we keep talking about price? Why is it the one thing that we continue to beat on? How about millennials? You're trying to go after the, the, this segment. 
93% are more interested in quality than they are price. And these aren't the only ones. J.D. Powers does a survey that they went and surveyed 85,000 new car buyers. They asked them, I want you to rank for me the top 10 things in order of importance in your buying decision. Guess where price ranks? Number six, you know what's number one? Quality, peace of mind. But we continue to want to market on price. We continue to want to try to justify price and we don't need to do that. There's a better way. How about your finance departments? For years now, finance departments have had to carry the load of our dealerships. We all know how important the finance department is and how important is the profitability is. However, people are coming into your store on a daily basis and they're saying to you, I can grow your, your, your extended service contract penetration or grow your PVR. Well, how are you going to do it? I'm going to do it the same way the last guy told you he was going to do it. What new has gone on? Is finance meeting your expectations? Let me tell you what the problem in finance right now is. We're attracting our customers on price. They walk in the door and we're closing them on price. And we send them to finance, we're losing on price because they're not looking at the value of what it is that happens in the finance department. We've got to change that. We're setting our finance departments up for failure in the showroom when we sell the car. There's a better way. We're going to talk about that as we go through today. Retention. Okay, that's not important to anybody. Sure it is. These are statistics that came from, from Cox Automotive Group, and you guys all know them. 50% of, of customers will tell you that the service department greatly influenced the likelihood of buying another vehicle from the dealership. Your service department is what sells the second car. And we all know we make more money on the second and third sale than we do on the first. But there's another 36% of the people that say that they're somewhat influenced about buying their next car from you because of the service department. That's 86% of your customers that are being influenced. We have to do a better job of getting those people into our service drive. Think I'm right? Quick loops, tire stores, independent repair outlets are taking 50% of your repair visits. Cox Automotive is telling you that the industry as a whole is missing $99 billion in annual revenue. We've got to change that. We've got to make it important for that customer to come back to our service department. Training. Told you before, training is, is near and dear to my heart. Having been a football coach, I know the importance of training. You know, we were ranked number one in the country in 1992. And when we showed up on Saturday night, we didn't run plays that we practiced one time. You practice them over and over and over again. But are we doing that in our dealerships? Are we giving them a message once and walking away? We can't. That's not going to be successful. I had a golf coach one time who was working on my swing, and he gave me a drill to hit a ball, and I hit it one time, and I looked at him and said, well, that's not going to work. And he looked at me, and he said, David, you're not going to eat one salad and get skinny. you got to do it over and over again. So training is an integral part. We've got to have a positive message. We've got to have a consistent message and we've got to do it over and over again to make it stick. If we're going to be successful, this is how we're going to tie all these pieces together. So we got five areas that we want to talk about. How are we going to energize those profits? How are we going to move people in the right direction? What we're going to do is we're going to talk about a culture change. We're going to talk about building a value of culture in our dealerships. I mentioned to you earlier that I've got over 300 dealership partners around the country, and we've gone into those dealerships, and we've asked these questions that we're posing to you, and we were able to help each one of those dealerships in a unique way, but all of them using the same platform. So what platform is it that I'm talking about? I'm talking about a lifetime powertrain warranty. All right. How many of you were snickering? How many of you just rolled your eyes and sat back and went, oh, my Lord, here we go again. I've seen these. They don't work. I know there's skeptics out there. You should be skeptical because a lot of these programs don't work. A lot of these lifetime powertrain warranties are not built to be productive for you as a dealership. They're carrying gimmicks. They're carrying gotchas. They've got problems in them. They've got issues. They're not marketed correctly. They don't have a lot of the pieces that need to be, be present to make this successful. 
What I want to do is I want to tell you a little bit about ours, and then we're going to solve those problems. Our program is unlike any other lifetime program you've ever seen. See, what we've got to do is we've got specifically designed tools for your dealership to set you apart from your competition. But in order for all of this to work, we've got to have several strong foundational concepts to make this happen. Let's talk about what those are real quick. Most of you know the difference between an admin obligor and a dealer obligor. And that's an amazing point when you're talking about lifetime powertrain warranties. Too many programs out there want to make you the obligor. They want to make you the person responsible for the contingent liability of this program down the line. And that's not good for you. In the event that there is a, a, a large uh, loss in your reinsurance program, uh, there's a, a transmission on a particular model vehicle that sees a lot of repairs and the, the reinsurance program takes a hit, or somebody goes out of business, you're on the hook, and that could be millions of dollars. We don't do that. What we do is we've got all our programs built as an admin on the door. Our contract is between the administrator and the, and the customer. That way, the dealership carries no contingent liability moving forward. And that's an important thing when we talk about the administrator that you choose. See, there's two kinds of administrators in this business. There's those administrators that like to pay claims and those administrators that don't want to pay claims. They see the way to make profits for you as not paying claims or taking care of a customer. That's a terrible idea. If we're trying to drive that customer back again, again, and again to make sure that they're coming to our dealership, we have got to set ourselves apart. We can't have these gimmicks and gotchas. I see companies out there all the time that tell a customer that they're required to come back to your dealership to do their maintenance or they're required to pre-authorize. You can't do that. That's against the law to make a customer come back to your dealership using a warranty as a federal law, the Magnuson Moss Act. It can't be done. And all it does is turn around and make your customers unhappy. You know, there are things like I, I saw the other day, a, a customer had a transmission claim turned down because they had to change the cabin air filter. They're gimmicks, they're gotchas. Why are we doing this? I saw another one that said, you have to bring the car back after five years or seven years to be inspected again. Guys, all this is doing is making your customer unhappy. They don't wanna buy a car. We're trying to find ways not to pay claims. That doesn't work. You need an administrator and a program that wants to take care of your customers because the success is driving your dealership productivity. That's why we've only got the best administrators. We've also got a quality program that we've built. You know, it's not like some of the other ones you'll see, a 100,000 mile limit, 200,000 miles, 10 years, 20 years, whatever it is. Ours is for life. And then what we've done is we've built pieces into it that make it unique. Small things, well, maybe not small, seals and gaskets. You know, you hear people tell you seals and gaskets are covered in their, in their program, but other people don't cover them on a standalone basis. They make it part of another covered repair in order for that coverage to kick in. So think about this, your customer backs out of the driveway, there's oil in the driveway, they bring it to see you under other programs. Unless the engine or transmission has failed, we're not fixing that, that rear main seal. Our program says we're gonna fix that seal on a standalone basis, two reasons. First of all, it's less expensive than replacing an engine. Secondly, it makes you look good. The idea is to continue to make that customer happy with what they see in your dealership. Our program comes with 10 years worth of roadside assistance. How important is that? Knowing that your, your wife or your daughter or your child is gonna be able to get a tow in the middle of the night if a car breaks down or have a tire change, that they know someone's there to take care of them and they see that as being you. And why do they see that as being you? Because the way we design your marketing. Maybe the most important part of this whole piece is the marketing that we do. See, the OEMs are out there and they're doing a great job promoting your product, but they don't care who they buy the car from. They don't care if they buy it from you or not. I do. So what we do is we design all of our programs in a white label format. They're all private labeled to you. So when the customer looks, they know they're getting something from coming to your dealership. And we're not just talking a small amount of marketing materials, we'll talk about that shortly. In order for this entire program to be successful for your dealership, you've got to have the right private label materials, the right administrators who are taking care of claims. You got to make sure the program's right. You got to make sure that everything there is designed to energize your profits. 
So how are we going to use this to make your dealership more profitable? Let's talk about how we're going to use it to solve those five problems that we just sat there and laid out for you. Let's start with the digital. We talked earlier about the fact that your customer is going to a third party website to start with. They're absolutely right. When you go onto a third party website and you click on and you see two different vehicles and the first vehicle has nothing with it, but the second one tells you that there's value in you going to that dealership, that lifetime powertrain warranty, it jumps out at you. Other people aren't building these. They're setting these up so that they jump out at a customer so that that makes the customer follow to your website. That's what we want to see them do. We want to make sure that they stand out. Here's another page. Fontana Nissan is one of our partners, one of our very good ones in California. You'll see when you look at that page, one of those cars jumps out at you. And it's not the price that jumps out. What jumps out is the fact that there is something that comes with that car other than the price that's listed. A customer is drawn to that. A customer wants to see the value behind it. They go so far as to put it on their Facebook page. We want to make sure that when a customer goes on your Facebook, what's the first thing that they're seeing? There it is. Lifetime powertrain warranty. If you look real close, you'll also see some of that marketing material across the, the windshields of each one of those cars. How about when you go to YouTube? When you go on their YouTube site, what do you see? You see a unique selling proposition. You don't see price. We're not talking about price. Are we going to get to it? Sure we are. But we're going to tell them why buying a car from us has more value than buying a car from their competition. So now what happens is that customer follows to your website and the message has got to continue to be consistent. You see, if you go to the circus expecting to see the people you saw in the ads, the trapeze artists and the clowns and all of those things, and you get there and they're not there, it becomes a gimmick. So when you use this program, you look, you see on their website, the first thing that jumps out at you, lifetime powertrain warranty, they're setting themselves apart. Now, next step, when that customer goes in and looks at an individual vehicle, there's the price, but that lifetime stays with it everywhere they go. These things drive value. They drive customers to your site. They drive customers to your site, and when they click on it to read more information, there are videos there. There are things that talk about it, that talk about why your product is more valuable to that customer because of the things that come with it. So we're going to start out with digital, making sure that we are driving a message to the customer that there's more value in coming to your dealership because you carry something that no one else does. Now we're going to go to the front end sales. This is a very important piece because when you talk about front end sales, you need a couple of things. I told you that when they come to the dealership, when they go to your website, that the circus has to be there. We're going to produce marketing materials that are private labeled to your dealership so that when they walk in, they know that this is coming from you. This is going to drive loyalty to your dealership. It's going to build value in your dealership. We use these pieces to teach the salespeople how to take that value proposition and talk to customers about it. We do it from the moment we introduce ourselves, every phone call that we take. We do it when, we're, when we walk them into the showroom. There's a brochure and, that we hand out to every single customer when they walk in, every touch point. There are windshield banners across the windshield of the car so that when a customer shows up, they see it. If they come in, you know, 50% of your customers are walking on your lot after hours. You're not there to talk to them. I am. I'm there to tell them why you're different. Over top of the door handle, there's a driver's side door cling. So when they reach for the door handle after a walk around to take a test drive, they see why you're different. But you don't need to take my word for it. We asked uh, Frank Bachman, who's the general manager there at Fontana, to throw a little message for us. Let me tell you what he had to say. Banners and table covers and across the front windows of the store. Once we got everything in place and still a few more things going, it started to make a big difference. People would come in and think about it. Our front end grocers have gone up. New cars. Our finance department. Uh, well, let me put it this way. The finance director bought us two to nail about this product. 
subsequently, if you're seeing more depenetration, it's going to sort of contract penetration go up instead of down on the decreased. What the policy about is unbeknownst to me, it's a general sales manager for raising the rocket size. We're very, very pleased with this program. Much more than thought. Very happy to business to find here. And we wouldn't have to take it away. Well, thanks, Frank. You helped make my next point for me. So we, we've talked about your front end. We're going to energize your salespeople. We're going to give them something different to talk about. We're going to have give them a value proposition, not just talking about the vehicle and not just talking about the price. We're going to build value so that we can justify cost. Well, now, once you've done that, Frank just mentioned to you his finance department. It's great because the finance departments that we talk to every time that we walk into a dealership, the finance managers, the finance, uh, the, the finance director look at us and go, well, this is going to cost me money. And it's actually exactly the opposite. Mentioned to you, we've got over 300 dealership customers around the country. I can tell you that every one of them will tell you that this has a positive impact in their finance department. Well, why is that the case? Well, we talked earlier that in, when we're talking about price, we've set a price-minded customer into your finance office. And a price-minded customer isn't looking for value. Now that we have built value early on on the third-party sites, value into your website, value when they show up on the showroom floor, value when they buy the vehicle, they walk into your finance office and what are they looking for? They're looking for value. So this makes it actually very easy for our finance managers. We've designed a piece for them that's a two-sided piece where they're able to lay this in front of a customer and say, we want you to be a customer for life. And because of that, we've stood behind your car for life. You know, we're going to make sure that that powertrain is covered. Some of the most expensive repairs that you could possibly have. However, you know, there's 15,000 other parts on your car. And now because we don't have to cover the powertrain any longer, we can actually cover those parts less than we ever could before. You know it is a wrap. And now you get a customer who wants to lean forward, a customer who leans forward on the desk. And for those of you that have been in finance, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The customer leans forward and listens to what you say. They listen to the value of what's there. What are we seeing in our finance departments after this program goes in? Those finance departments that are doing exceptionally well with penetration, we're still seeing a 7% bump in penetration. We're seeing a bump in PVR because we're dealing with a product that's less expensive. Those, those finance departments that are struggling, we've seen anywhere from a 30 to 35% bump in their, in their extended service contract penetration and in their PVR. We're there to work with not only your salespeople and building the value, we're there to work with your finance department and continue to build the value there too. And that goes into the next part that we're talking about when we start talking about retention and how important retention is. You see, if we've given the customer the value that they need, if we've given them that culture change that they weren't expecting to see in the dealership, we've attracted that customer with value, we've converted them to our brand and we continue to nurture that, those customers wanna come back to the dealership. When we have an opportunity to show it to you individually, we can show you that there are tools built into the lifetime powertrain warranty that encourage a customer to return to your dealership. Not required, because we wanna make sure your customer's taken care of. But we see dealerships now seeing more traffic into their service drive. We're seeing more repairs come in because of the lifetime powertrain warranty. And we all know three, 3.5 quality service visits, and your customer is exponentially more likely to buy their next car from you. And they're gonna refer friends and they're gonna refer family because we've taken care of people. We've given them what they want, we've made sure they see the value, and now they become a brand advocate for what we do because we're building awareness from the very beginning and we encourage the customers to return by using these products and they work. So now, how does it all wrap up? It wraps up when we talk about champions training every day. I mentioned to you earlier, you don't win championships by practicing something once. 
sitting in front of you are some of the most prestigious trophies in the sports world. You know, the people that have held those trophies didn't practice their craft one time. They didn't practice their craft in a negative way. What they did is they went in and they practiced every day. They were trained every day. They had coaches, they had trainers, they had people that helped them. That's our role, to be there in the dealership. See, we found out a long time ago that a lot of the people that are in this segment of the business show up, drop off a box and leave, go get them. And your salespeople don't know what to do with it. Your finance people don't know what to do with it. Your sales managers don't know how to maximize it and use it to help drive profits in these areas. Well, we've solved that because we're there and we're there on a consistent basis. We continue to show up. We continue to make sure that it's done with a positive and entertaining message because we've discovered a long time ago, back when I was coaching football, I had a coach tell me that the how doesn't matter if you don't understand the why. If you teach somebody the why, the how becomes easy. So when we teach our classes, we explain to people why things work and why it's beneficial to them and why it's beneficial to the dealership. And because of that, getting them to go out and continue to talk the message is much more effective, much simpler. We heard from Frank Bachman earlier. Let's see what Frank's got to say about what we did in the training. Being an important program to a dealer, a kickoff was a little bit of a concern for us before it actually happened. And then when the day came about, Ad Copy and his team were in here, and I could not, I personally put on a more professionally entertaining meeting and getting the points across the day of Ad Copy. Everyone was clear about what it was. And he pushed us to have service advisors in there, technicians in there, receptionists, everyone. I love being around Frank. Frank is a positive guy. So many of the people we get an opportunity to work with in the automotive industry are positive people. They're excited about what we can do with a culture change and how the things we do change their profitability. And when you change profitability in the dealership, you change the trajectory of lots of people's lives. You take care of salespeople who make more, your finance people make more, your dealership makes more, it allows your accounting people to make more. You'll notice Frank made a comment about when we did the training there, I insisted that we had other people in there for the training. There was a couple reasons. First of all, that positive message gets people excited. But second of all, when one of my accounting people is out having dinner and somebody looks at them and says, I saw something when I drove past your dealership about a lifetime warranty, what does that mean? I don't want them to look back and say, I have no idea. I want them to be able to answer the question because people get excited about your dealership. They like working for you. It's one of the things that we do with this program is we also help with retention of employees. See, because Salespeople, when I first got in this business, were career salespeople. They got in, they stayed in sales, and they did it for 30 years. Now we see salespeople jump from one dealership to the next. Why? They don't have anything different to talk about. So because they don't have a different message, they don't sell any more than they did at the one before. And people always want to think the grass is greener on the other side. I'm here to tell you that with the program we have, the grass is greener where they're standing because we're going to water it, because we're going to make sure that the training is there to make them successful. But you can't do this with just any program. I've said it three or four times. There's several programs out there that aren't interested in making sure that all of these pieces are hit. So what we've done is we've made sure to have a program that takes care of the dealership, takes care of the customers, takes care of the salespeople. Jeremiah is one of my favorite uh, favorite general managers up in the Northwest. He works for Titus Will. He's a big Seahawks fan, so forgive him for wearing that Seahawks jersey if you're not a big Seahawks fan. But listen to what Jeremiah had to say. So uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the partnership that we have built with Binary. Um, as you know, uh, you probably get hundreds of emails a week from vendors who want to partner with you or they say they want to partner with you. Sell more cars and make more money. 
Uh, what I've found binary uh, with all my people is that they're present. They're here all the time. They give us everything we need. Um, sometimes as a GM or an owner, you have to call somebody. I never have to call them. They're always calling me. They're just, they're a partner. They're not a vendor. So uh, I can say one thing about them that you know as a GM when, when you have a vendor that is just there to take your money, and that's not mine. You know, we mentioned earlier that when we design marketing material, we design the marketing material with you in mind. We make sure we design that marketing material for you. There's no, that it wasn't a coincidence that the marketing material designed for that dealership has very close to the same colors as the football team they pull for up there. And it's driven a great deal of loyalty back to the dealership. So, in summary of what we're talking about, we're talking about a culture change. We're talking about the fact that there are ways to continue to grow your dealership in areas that may have become stagnant. We're going to use the products that we have at our disposal to drive your digital marketing. We have teams here that help with that. We have graphic designers who design things specifically to work in each one of those categories for you as a dealership. We're gonna make sure that your front end sales are energized. We're gonna make sure your salespeople have a unique selling proposition, something that sets them apart. When the customers come in, they're going to know your dealerships about value. When we're talking about real value, we're gonna know that your finance department has the opportunity to be successful because we've set customers up to walk in who are looking for value and the finance department has the opportunity to show that that translates into sales. Retention, amazingly important. We've been very, very uh, successful in making sure that our dealers are seeing an uptick in their retention, an uptick in their service drive. We're going to get people out of those, uh, the, the quick lubes and the, the third party or second party uh, uh, repair facilities to make sure that they're coming to see you. And we're gonna wrap all that up with some of the most quality training that you've ever seen take place in a dealership. More enthusiasm, excitement, your people are gonna be excited, your dealership's gonna benefit. These programs carry a lot of information and there's a lot more to what we talked about today. We're happy to help you in any way that we can. We'd love the opportunity to speak with you individually, to show you what we can do, to help you to realize those profits that you're trying to reach for the remainder of the year and in well into the future. We're, we stand ready to uh, take your phone calls and email, whatever we can do to help. I wanna thank you for your time today. Uh, I know how busy it is and I know in these, uh, these very challenging times that you need something to set yourself apart and I appreciate you taking the time to look at the solution that we have. So I'm happy to take any questions at this time, answer anything that we can possibly do for you. All right, thank you, David. Uh, I appreciate that. We've uh, we've got a couple of questions that have come in um, so far. And once again, you can on the right hand side, you can go ahead in the question box, uh, type your question, and we'll get to as many of them as we can. Um, the first question involves, you know, you mentioned at the at the beginning, you know, the the margins on the on the, the uh, sales side of the house and how, you know, that it's a race to the bottom. Um, and that that by marketing you can you can you can stop the bleeding i guess i should say so in your experience with the the different clients that you have um do you have any any stats on the the front end pvr or the back end pvr of of customer of of dealerships that have leveraged this to help them sell vehicles well that's a great question and you're going to see you know based on the brand that we're looking at whether it's domestic whether it's a whether it's a, a japanese or european model whatever the case is you're going to see different numbers go across the screen now one of the things that we do is we monitor dealerships on an individual basis we don't mix them together to come up with a with a round number i can tell you that on the low end, we're seeing dealerships see anywhere from 300 to 400 more uh, on those cars on the new side 
up to somewhere in the 700 to 800 range on the new side. Pre-owned side, we've seen the numbers be uh, uh, even better. And that has something to do with the training, talking to salespeople about how they handle that price objection with your competition, having a vehicle that's less expensive and how using the lifetime powertrain warranty helps you to hold gross. We see numbers that are closer to the, to the 700, 800 on the low end on the pre-owned side, uh, and, and they can get higher than that. Um, okay, the next question is like right now there's a big uh, there's a big push in what I'm going to define as digital retailing. Um, and you know the, the there are dealers are out there that are looking for ways to uh, to generate additional profits when you know they might not get a chance to get a, a swing in the box, if you will, inside a finance office with that customer. Uh, what are some of your customers doing to? to help make sure that that they can get that back-end PVR on customers that uh, during COVID and going forward are not in the showroom floor? Well, you know, with the program that we're talking about, the idea is to build value on the front end with the purchase from the beginning to the end. So what we're seeing, and we're seeing some of the dealerships that are handling some of the F&I through, a, through the uh, online sites or the, the mobile ways to handle that, and the message, is, the message is very consistent. You're still explaining to them the fact that we're covering part of the vehicle that has some of the most expensive repairs and that you're only responsible for covering those pieces that aren't part of the powertrain. I heard somebody the other day say, you know, uh, in the past you had to cover the entire Twinkie. Now we're covering the filling. All you've got to do is cover the cake. The message is very easy to translate in an online format to people. Some of the materials that we're using online also are helping that, that finance department to get that message across in a digital manner. You're never going to, you're, you're never, it's never going to be as easy to translate that message online as it is in person. And we're growing with uh, the dealerships as well, learning more ways and developing new ways to attack what is a new segment of our business. And we're seeing a great deal of success with some of the dealer branded marketing that we're using through the finance department. Okay. Um, one more question just popped in while you were answering the first question. Um, t talk to us a little bit about, like you say, from a training standpoint, and, and throughout this, you've peppered a lot of training. And it seems to me like you've got to have a holistic approach um to make this work the right way uh you know like some of your you know fontana nissan etc are doing uh because it's it can't just be a by you know a segmented you know siloed departmental approach that everybody's got to understand and needs to be part of the culture how, how do you make sure that this isn't a flash in the pan program but it's something that that everybody sees the value in for, uh, employee wise in the dealership that's a fantastic question so uh, you, you heard Frank make the comment that when we went in, we encouraged them to have everybody in the dealership be part of it. Service writers, accounting, back office people, people that aren't going to touch the customer. But this is an entire culture change in a dealership. This has to be a change that goes through everyone talking about why we want to be a more value-minded dealership versus being the, the low-cost dealership that's out there. Because we're negotiating on price, we're negotiating with our own paychecks, and that doesn't make sense. Our customers have told us it doesn't make sense, that's not what they're looking for. So first, you have to go in and you have to get that message across to begin with. But then, we've actually set our training up so that we are cycling back to the dealerships and working with our partners at the dealerships. We have, we have lots of agents that we work with in their dealerships who are carrying the same message in, and we've got a system where we visit those dealerships in incremental points of time to make sure that we retrain. And it's not just the original message. You're going back and you're talking about objection handling that they've heard. You go back and you talk about the challenges that they've done. You go back and you talk about different word tracks. So the entire time that you're doing these different training pieces, you are, it, it's an entire culture. So it goes on and on throughout the entire life cycle of the life cycle of the dealership. We're training everybody from the beginning to the end and it continues to go on. We have a 30 day checklist that we go on. 
We even go so far as to secret shop our dealerships. We'll go in, we have people that are designed, that are going in to look at those third-party websites and to make sure our dealership is getting all the, all the, uh, um, the benefit of the value proposition there. They go through the, the actual dealership website. We'll call the dealership, see how they're answering the phone, talk to people on the, on the uh, sales floor. We'll do a, um, we'll check on the BDC, make sure that the message is coming through on the BDC. So we have an entire system to continue to work with that dealership. It's not simply a one and done, that doesn't work. We're gonna continue uh, a relationship with that store. That's what this is all about. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time, David, and, and the, the unsung hero in the background, Troy, for, for helping to put this on. This has been uh, very informative. Um, once again, we will make this available to anybody who registered, and there will also be a copy on the community for anyone who wants to attend and watch this further. Uh, once again, David, thank you for, for spending some time walking us through some of the different ways we can improve profit in the store. I appreciate the opportunity, and we look forward to doing it again soon. Okay, and uh, anybody that attended, thank you again. Um, we hope to see you on future webinars.